See in Amsterdam, this is the office. Um, next to that, I always, I'm also a kind of creative consultant um, for businesses like uh, Volks Hotel. And next to that, I'm also an independent artist. And I make things like this. It's uh, for the, all the women. It's uh, it's a gasoline uh, generator that uh, produces electricity, which uh, the car drives on. <laughs> but more about that later. First, I wanted to talk about weird. And I got, I got asked for this, uh, for this uh, thing. And I was thinking, well, weird. What do I have with it? And I thought, um, I am actually not so weird. Um, Although my projects sometimes seem a bit weird, I really don't like being randomly weird. And a lot of clients think of creatives as people who are really weird, and they just say like, yeah, just come up with like 20 weird ideas, and I'll just pick the one I like. <laughs> and, and I really don't like that. So please, as, as I can, if I can inspire you for just today, like creativity is not about being weird, because uh, to me it's it's about it's actually a very logical uh, process. It's about telling stories or solving problems, but not about being weird. So why do my projects seem to be weird then? Well, maybe it's more interesting to talk about uh, sense and nonsense. I always like to to put a lot of sense in things like maybe to solve a problem, for example, but also nonsense, like maybe it's a weird way you solve the problem or it's actually a weird problem that you're solving. Um, I want to show some projects uh, which have a lot of sense and nonsense. Um, and you can uh, tell me if I'm still making sense uh, all the time. So the first project I want to tell you about is um, that started about two years ago I was in a bar and I was with some friends and the moment I went to uh, to the bar to order a drink I heard my friend telling a joke to the other friend and I thought wait a second that's my that's my joke <laughs> and I think a lot of people have that have that thought and I, and I thought well I need some kind of evidence to prove that it is my joke, some kind of way to prove my intellectual property over that joke, because like it's not a, it's easy to steal a joke, but to come up with one, it's hard. It's a, it's a talent. So I created the Grapjes op Troy Centrum, the the joke uh, patenting uh, center, and you can. Um, patent your jokes with me. So, for example, this one was um, patented on the 2nd of December of 2015 and the title of the joke is Which Side of the Horse? Um, so it goes like this. On which side of the horse is the most hair? Pause. The outside. 
And the explanation is, uh, there's an explanation on there. Um, <laughs> like the listener to the joke uh, will think of the usual sides, like the, uh, the front side or the back sides or the top of, or the bottom, but they'll not think about the inside or the outside. So that will be uh, surprising, so <laughs> also funny. And there's also some uh, appearance forms. So um, horse can be exchanged with a dog or with any animals that has the most hair on the outside, of course. <laughs> well, this one is also nice. Two pizzas in the oven. The one pizza says to the other, hey, it's getting a bit warm in here. And the other pizza says, ah, a talking pizza. Well, and that you can also do it with a muffin or a cookie or things that it's very important things that are in the oven that can't talk because otherwise the joke doesn't make sense. Um, another project I, I really like to show you is um, the, that I did in Boxtel. It's a small town in Brabant, and uh, a curator uh, he had to do uh, an art tour through. Uh, Boxtel and and he did, he did a really nice thing. He he got a map of Boxtel and he threw some confetti over it. And where the confetti is landed, that is the place where people were invited to make something. And and I got this spot, a very uninspiring spot on the Ladungsweg, um, in a kind of industry area. And in the middle of that spot was this was this sign. And do you know, who knows who, what this sign is? Come on! <laughs> yeah, there's a, thank you. There's a side street coming from the left and you have a right of way. You are on the right of way way. And um, as a child, I was, all, I was actually bicycling to a school and I, and I didn't know what these signs were for and, and, and I had this fantasy and I, know, I knew it wasn't true but I, I thought it was a cool idea that, that this was actually a warning for a kind of black rocket like thing. So I decided to make um, <laughs> this and I put, it, I put it on the street and um, <laughs> So, and there were no cars who drove into it because it was clearly indicated <laughs> over there. And I was, I was still having some fun uh, with this. And I think this makes perfect sense. Um, also, when you talk about weird, I think there's a lot of weird stuff in the world already. It doesn't need me to make it more weird. Um, for example, uh, fake flowers or um, fake uh, fire on a, on a television or uh, wood print flooring like plastic um, plastic wood and it, it seems that people really need this um, like really some kind of atmosphere some some life in their homes but they don't want the inconveniences of the smell or the that it costs a lot and they want to to be able to clean it uh, easily so I thought that was kind of weird. So I decided to enlarge that uh, phenomenon and I created um, the perfect uh, friend which, who will always love you and always listen, uh, but it doesn't have the inconvenience of a real person. <laughs> you can easily uh, clean him with a, with a towel and you can pick a color that uh, fits your interior. So, um, so also some uh, advices how to, how to use him. You can put him next to your granddad if he's in the hospital. Like sometimes it really takes a long time for people to, uh, to die and then you don't want to sit next to it so long. So you can put him next to it or you can invite him to your birthday party. Or when you're building a new um, living area, you can already put some on the street to kind of create atmosphere in the street already. <laughs> um, yeah, and then after a couple of years of making uh, art, I 
thought, well, why is nobody buying my stuff? Because everyone is liking it, and they, but no one is buying it. And they say, like, well, Bart, it's nice, but I just don't want it in my home. Like, it's a bit too big or a bit too weird or whatever. So I thought, like, let's make something that will go into someone's home perfectly, someone for above the couch. It's like the cliche thing. Like when you, when you look for a painting or, or, or a picture, you want to hang it above your couch to, to kind of match your interior and to match your couch. So I did the most uh, not weird thing, I think. I just painted a couch. I painted the same couch. Uh, so if you order a painting at me, with me, then I will make something that matches your couch perfectly. And um, the funny thing was that the, the, pain, like, the idea seemed very logical, but the effect was actually there that it really matches the interior. So, <laughs> so the colors, of course, and, but, but, also, but also if you have a kind of a classical couch like this, the painting also becomes kind of classical. So it really matches that. And of course, the color. This one, was, this one was also kind of cool. It was like the smallest couch uh, I had with the biggest painting. Um, I want to show you also a project that I'm working on uh, right now that is not yet uh, finished. So this is very uh, new, very exciting uh, to see this, guys. Um, I found out that there's a lot of stuff that has a uh, standard size. So, so there, there's a lot of standard sizes and, and all the standard sizes in the different stuff also are the same. So for example, a, floor, a tile on the sidewalk is 30 by 30 centimeters and I found out that a lot of things are 30 by 30 centimeters. Really a lot. So this is just a, a small thing like for example, like a pillow or a, a Star Wars cake or, um, let me think, like a spugdoekje, a spitting towel for a baby. And um, so I was just going online to see all the crazy stuff that's 30 by 30. I really like this one, it's very sweet. It's just a piece of textile, but the description is, this high quality silk is perfect for all kinds of magic routines. <laughs> From stage performances to close-up illusions, this elegant white silk is an essential part of your next, of your next act. And, um, and also to, to kind of show you guys in one category, if you like animals, for example, a, ha a hammock for rats and f frets, <laughs> ferrets. That's 30 by 30 centimeters. Or uh, this, you think napkins, but when you look closer, it's horses and production animals. <laughs> so it's like um, to wipe off semen when you're uh, breeding uh, horses. Yeah, or um, a calendar with animals, or uh, something to breed out a chicken, or a mat for your pond with fish, I don't know, for a snake, for a cat. Oh yeah, and this was also uh, pretty nice. Um, I was thinking, can I have a meal from front to end only using 30 by 30 centimeters things? So, well, you start when you, when you want to cook, you first you wash your hands, of course, in your 30 by 30 centimeter sink. Then um, you take your uh, stuff out of your 30 by 30 centimeters uh, cupboard. Then you take your um, cutting board, your 30 by 30 uh, centimeters cutting board, or if this one is uh, dirty, you can take the other one. And maybe you want to make uh, sushi with your 30 by 30 sushi mat. 
or you want to bake a cake in your 30 by 30 non-stick masterclass cake pan, or uh, make a pizza, well, then you want to grill something in your grill pan, or put it in the oven, or make another type of pizza, or maybe barbecue. Then when you finished your, uh, meal, well, finished your uh, cooking your food, you can put it in a 30 by 30 bowl, and then put it on the, put it on the table and put it on your 30 by 30 plate. While you're eating, you might use a 30 by 30 napkin. Well, then you've, then you've finished eating, and then you can uh, wrap it up in your 30 by 30 foil, um, or put it in a 30 by 30 plastic uh, box. And uh, the stuff you don't need anymore, all the stuff from the cutting board maybe, put it in your 30 by 30 uh, bin. But it's important uh, to tell this because you're not done, you have to clean it up with a 30 by 30 towel and also uh, dry it with a 30 by 30 uh, uh, tea towel. Well, I thought, what should I do with all these? So I just started collecting them. Um, for example, this uh, scratching pole for cats. Or, um, yeah, this is a word that I didn't know. Uh, it's a tile for on the sidewalk, but it's for knikkeren. Marbles for, yeah. So this is a kuk, we say in Dutch. Um, well, that's just kind of a grill thing. And that's a barbecue wok. A calendar, a towel. That's a clock and that's a little stool. But you can use it for each other, kind of. Um, so I was thinking, well, I should be, there's another really nice thing about these things, it's that they are the same size, so you can kind of stack them um, and it's the same size. So I, I decided to kind of start stacking them. And then I was actually creating aesthetically, aesthetic sculptures, so that was kind of new for me. But it's kind of cool, or this one. That, that, that scratching pole I thought was really nice. Well, that plant is not 30 by 30, but the pot is, so every pot needs a plant. So yeah, I'm exhibiting this in uh, a month. Um, another project that is not finished at all is... Um, am I... How's the time? I, I think I've, my clock says... Maybe I, well, maybe it's already an hour or not. <laughs> oh. It's nine thirty. Okay, then it's going good. The last thing I want to say, I want to tell you, show you, is um, birds. I, I really grew a fascination for birds this last last uh, months or year, and. I just wanted to like spot them more as a hobby, like uh, notice all the different kind of birds. And uh, this is a, a wood pigeon, for example, just not, not just a normal pigeon. So that's how nerdy I wanted to get. And, um, but at some point I noticed that birds are always on top of things, like on a lamppost or a little fence or always on top of things. So I thought, can't I just persuade them to get on top of things that I kind of direct? So I had this idea, like, can I put, can I, can I get a pigeon to sit on this pigeon? On a plastic pigeon, plastic pigeon. And so I did a lot of testing. This, this was my first serious attempt. I did a lot of not very serious attempts, but they didn't work. So I put this whole installation. So I got like a, a movement detector and a camera and I set it all up. And I put some peanut butter on his head. This is on the roof of my house in Amsterdam. And, um, but the pigeons didn't come. Because what I found out that unlike uh, dogs, birds are really visual. So dogs would more smell and hear. And, but birds are really visual. So they see from really far away that there's a bird there. So they're actually quite scared of this whole thing. So 
before they would get on top of his head. That, that's really crazy. And I actually thought, like, this is never going to happen. But I thought, well, birds also are hungry sometimes, so maybe that will trick their mind a little bit. So I went on, uh, on, this, on this website, uh, logvogel.com. <laughs> it's like, uh, how would you translate that? Luring bird. Luring, luring bird. And this is actually for killing birds. So it's pretty intense, but you have loads of things that, that will attract birds. So I got this, this little potion. It's uh, anise oil. So birds go really crazy over that, apparently. <laughs> so I set it up and I, I went to bed and, and early in the morning I heard the camera go off. I was like, oh yes, maybe there's something happening. So I checked my photos and I, um, I found this uh, crow. <laughs> and then this one. <laughs> I was like, fuck. <laughs> Come on. Even this one. <laughs> Pretty nice pic picture, but I mean, so, so I, I did it again, I, I kept, I kept uh, doing it, and then... <laughs> Thank you, that, that, was, that was my talk. <laughs>